Plutonium, which was a man-made element discovered by Glenn Seaborg and his colleagues in 1941, was a different story. When work at Los Alamos was just beginning, the Italian physicist Emilio Segre was assigned to research the physical properties of plutonium. There were a number of buildings down in the Pajarito Canyon. During the Manhattan Project, they used every existing building on the Pajarito Plateau for something because there was hardly anything up here. Segre worked a year with very limited amounts of plutonium that had been made in a cyclotron. Then when plutonium began to flow from the big production reactors in Hanford, Washington, he discovered that it was contaminated with another isotope of plutonium, plutonium-240. Plutonium-240 has the unfortunate capability of undergoing spontaneous fission. It doesn't need a neutron to hit it to start it off. And the presence of these early neutrons would have caused the gun type of plutonium to fizzle, pre-detonate and not give a proper yield. This led to a crisis at Los Alamos because they had planned to use a gun bomb. They had to completely reorganize the laboratory and try to find some alternative way of assembling a critical mass. A risky and uncertain alternative was to develop an implosion weapon where a plutonium core is surrounded by explosive lenses. Inward moving shock waves would then compress the plutonium to form a critical mass so rapidly that it didn't have time to pre-detonate. But these were new technologies, and the challenge of making such a design was daunting. In August 1944, Oppenheimer expanded and reorganized the laboratory to focus on implosion research. I arrived very late in the day, sometime in August of 44 with the big expansion that went on in the lab in the middle of 44. Intense, intense concern, intensity of work, intensity of hope, intensity of wonder, didn't know what was going to happen next. I felt very much, and I think most people, especially those who came in that 44 crisis, felt like soldiers. We were being enlisted to win this battle. With the new demand for technicians to deal with this new research, the Army gathered together some 1,200 military recruits who had some kind of technical training. Uh, these young men and women came to Los Alamos to form what was called the Special Engineer Detachment. Many of them were assigned to the new X Division, X for Explosives, which was run by a former Cossack in the White Russian Army and Ukrainian nationalist, Harvard professor, chemist, explosives expert named George Kistiakovsky. The concrete bowl is testimony to the uncertainty of the plutonium bomb design. They realized early that taking a large percentage of the world's plutonium and testing the weapon, if it didn't work, they had to have some way to recover the plutonium, just spend a billion dollars producing it. And if they just took the plutonium and blew it up with uh, a bunch of high explosives and it didn't go critical, they had to have some way to get it back. So one of the ideas they had was we'll, they, they would build a huge sort of concrete dish, fill it full of water, put the tower where they would test the Trinity device on it in the center of this big pool of water. And then if it didn't produce the kind of explosion they were looking for, the explosion would sort of suck up the water out of the bowl, engulf the material. It would come down within this large uh, sort of water reservoir, and then you could drain that down to a central um, area and recover that material. Only in the spring of 1945, after hundreds of experiments, were the scientists finally able to confirm that the plutonium implosion design would probably work. They weren't certain, therefore they knew they needed to test that bomb. <laughs> 